Hey friends, Jimmy Clegger here, uh, the managing director in beautiful Grand Junction, Colorado. And uh, I just have to tell you, talking to some of my Bozeman peeps and then uh, the folks down in Telluride, it's a little chilly compared to, to Grand Junction. So uh, I am super excited. It's It's been a beautiful day and uh, Julie and I already had our leadership council meeting. And uh, But I want to introduce you to this amazing agent who's got an amazing team in our office, Miss Julie Schaefer. Welcome. Well, thank you, Jimmy. Yeah, I appreciate you. It's a pleasure appreciate to be here coming. in so, your in your presence. Uh, well, thank you very much. I, yeah, <laughs> you, you, you're such flattery there, but um, no, I appreciate it. So I uh, want to spend a couple minutes here with Julie. Just, uh, you know, I want to introduce you, you guys to Julie. And then we're going to explore what's making her successful, what's making her team successful. She's got an amazing team. And then from there, we're going to talk about some some things that she's got going on in the community. So uh, I'm going to open the floor up to Julie and just, just ask you really kind of just an open question that says, who is Julie Schaefer? Tell us about you, where, you, you know, kind of your, your upbringing and how you got to where you're at right now. I am a lifelong resident of the Grand Junction area. Um, fourth generation now with my um, children and grandchildren, six generations strong in the Grand oh. Valley here. So, you know, pretty, Beautiful. we've got some pretty deep roots yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> um, I uh, have two sisters, two amazing sisters. One, Stephanie Woolley is uh, an agent on my team. And then uh, we, I also have another, the, our youngest sister is a uh, professor at the University of Wash. Uh, I'm sorry, University of Wisconsin, Wisconsin in Madison. Yes. Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah that's right. Wisconsin. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So um, just on Grand Junction, Grand Junction is the biggest small town you ever lived in. And I'm sure you, I mean, you're linked to just about everybody in the Valley then. Well, we have, you know, years ago, it used to feel that way. You know, that Grand Junction has expanded and there's yeah. a lot more people here. So used to be, you'd go out to dinner and know half the people in the restaurant, not so much anymore. So you know, much. a lot okay. of people that are coming into the Valley here, but. Uh, so, yeah. so, and, and we're seeing people start to find Grand Junction, Grand Junction's being put on the map. And that's yeah, a, New York Times, you know, one of the. Yeah best places to live in the entire world. So yeah, yeah it's, one of, yeah, it's one of those been places amazing. You have to go visit yes. is, is what they're saying. So we've known it all along, you know, it's been our little secret, but not so much a secret anymore. Yeah, it's getting out. So um, with regards to real estate, what, what drew you into real estate? Um, actually, I've always had a been very business minded and um, for for years and years. Um, that was something I actually went out and got my uh, did the classes and everything about 20, uh, a little over 20, almost 30 years ago. Wow. Okay. Completed the classes the day, the week of the test. I was offered a job um, in radio and to, um, you know, help. Uh, start up a brand new radio station. It had a very small guaranteed salary versus um, commission income with right. two very small children. I was a single mom at the time and yeah. made the decision that maybe I should do the grown up thing and, you know, think about the <laughs> the smaller base and, the, right. you know, a little more stability than um, embarking on my own. So I chose that path many years ago. And um, you know, actually, it worked out very well. I got a lot of uh, background, a substantial amount of marketing and yeah. um, special event education. I say, you've worked on some big events here in the Valley, too, and, which is uh, pretty amazing. Yeah. You know, so then my husband and I, we bought and sold businesses and we have bought and sold real estate over the years for ourselves. And it just became one of those things when it was time for me to progress to the next stage of my life, next chapter. I said, honey, I'm jumping in with this yep. and we're going to do this full time. So Amazing. Okay. Yeah. So you have built, you know, a really incredible team. So uh, t tell us about your team, right? Well, I, so my sister, um, again, amazing, amazing person, Stephanie, um, she retired from the state of Colorado and I, um, she's a contract specialist. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, hey, you know, you're far too, young. she's younger than I am. She's, you're far too young to you know, just be out there playing all the time. So why don't you come in and, you know, jump in here and, you know, work with me a little right. bit. And so she did that. Then we brought on Beth Rubicava, who's been a dear friend of mine. I went mm -hmm. to school with her husband from the time we were in uh, junior high right. all the way through school, known her for many years. Then Rhonda Bever, who is an absolutely amazing, amazing person. 
Um, she has been an agent for, you know, far longer than I have been, but she and I go back many years. Mm -hmm. Um, I used to call on her when she was the marketing director for the entire city market grocery store chain. So she is a, just a, a wonderful person. And she had kind of wanted to, she had her own team and she was like, you know, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'd kind of like to take a little bit of a step back. And she had Anna Martin on her team. And I said, why don't the two of you come on and join us? Yeah. And so that's what we did. Um, We teamed up together and then Ernie Ernie Martin. <laughs> he's he's a lone guy on the team, right? Yeah. He was one, you know, we felt like we should be equal opportunity uh, <laughs> employers, I guess. So anyway, Ernie came in and said, hey, I'd really like to, I like what you guys are doing. Could, would Be you mind, uh, you know, having a little testosterone on the team? Yeah. Not at all. But, so yeah, so balance yeah. it out. And amazing. then we have a couple, I have a, uh, a marketing director yep. um, that handles all of our uh, graphics work, our newsletters, our um, social media campaigns, all of that. And then we have our head cheerleader, Stacey Height, that is yeah. also, you know, in our office Amazing. and uh, she kind of keeps track of all of us. Love it. Yeah. Okay. So you've been successful. You've got a, su- a successful team. There's got to be some imperatives. There's got to be some things that you do on a daily, weekly basis that make you successful in real estate. What, what, what are those? What are those, some of those key, key aspects to your business? I think, I think the thing that first and foremost, you have to be able to hire people or surround yourself with people, not necessarily hire, but surround yourself with people that are much better at doing things than you are yourself. Yeah. Okay. Love it. Um, I am, you know, I'm definitely the not the brain trust of the bunch, you know, the other agents on the, on my team are, you know, obviously they're tremendously successful. Um, and I feel like, you know, their hard work is really what, what drives me. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, same with hiring Adrena and Stacy. you know, you, that's the support staff that you need and you can't do it all. Right. And, uh, we have a really good communication, like our, we're, our texts, we get texts going and we'll talk to each other, you know, 10, 20 times a day, you know, back and forth, back and forth. We're always in communication with one another. So I think more than anything, it's that. Yeah. And then not being afraid to reach out, asking for help, mm-hmm. um, you know, and we we show up at the office. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? <laughs> the, uh, yeah. I like to say, you know, COVID was a blessing and a curse, right? Uh, it was a blessing in that uh, I remember when it happened, everybody's like, how am I going to sell real estate? For, I don't have an office. Right. And then everybody learned how to pivot. We all worked from home. You know, there's several months in there. And, and But the curse is that we all got comfortable working from home. Now, I will tell you that the successful agents are the ones that are coming into the office every day, that are treating the business like a business, uh, that are collaborating. I mean, there, there's a real spirit of collaboration for folks That's that come correct. into yes. the office and be around the office. So, um, you know, we talk about not being, being a silent agent. Well, if you want to be a silent agent, you can be a silent agent to marketing. You can also be a silent agent by not showing up to the to, to the office. And guess what? You lose. There's so much that you, that you gain just from, from yes. being around like-minded people, bouncing ideas off really, really constantly. Yes. About things. Yes. Yeah. Right. We're writing offers. It doesn't matter whether, you know, it's writing offers, it's doing your listings. It's just questions in general. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're running around, you know, or we'll be at the copier, you yeah. know, right. hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Yeah. You know, there's a entire brain trust here that you can derive from and you know you don't need to be on your own no. You're much stronger in numbers than, I, than we are on our yeah. on our own I, I think uh it, it was napoleon hill when when he talks about think and grow rich he, you know there's like a whole conversation in there about masterminds right and he talks about formal masterminds but the informal masterminds are are amazing because you put two or three heads together the problems right. you can solve or the the techniques that you learn yes. from somebody yes. else is, is pretty amazing. So um, the other thing is we've got such a great spirit of collaboration in this office that anybody could walk into your office. Anybody can walk into Olin's office, Jen Peterson's office, Kenzie Ross's office yep. and ask a question and you're going to get the answer. And it's not like we're holding back. There's no, none of those folks will hold back. They will give you the right answer to help you be successful. Right. That's correct. So, okay. So kind of on that spirit, 
Uh, we've been talking about a changing market. I know inventory is down nationally. Yes. Inventory is down here. Uh, I know you know Montrose and Telluride. The office, the 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 the, uh, the inventory is down. But then we, for the first time, guys, for the first time, we had uh, the future president of the the Colorado Mortgage Lenders Association. Uh, came in and said he's anticipating rates to get down into the four percent by the summertime. Yeah, that's the first time that in, in probably eight months that, that I've heard that. And, and so, in this changing market, in the spirit of a changing market, what what conversations are you sharing with your clients? Well, it, let me let me back okay. up, Jimmy, just to, for a minute. Yeah. In this changing market, mm -hmm. um, one of the things, and I know we kind of joked around a little bit among some of the agents. You know, this is whole different January than it was last year yeah. or even the year before, mm -hmm. you know, and yes, I have threatened to slip my wrists a couple of times, <laughs> like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? Right. But the in anticipation of that, we could see, especially some of the seasoned agents could see how easy the last couple of years were, you mm -hmm. know, like we would get a listing, we'd throw it out there. We would just, well, we're going to wait until Monday to review offers, anticipating we'd be in a multiple offer situation and stuff. We're not seeing that quite as much as we did before. In fact, we're we're rarely seeing right. that level of, of action mm -hmm. on our listings um, that we saw before. And so one of the things that we did have to talk about was, you know, we've got to get back to the basics. We've yeah. got to get back to having open houses. We've got to get back to, you know, putting signage out. We've got to get back to staging homes. You know, the things that we used to do that made us, brought us to the party and really made yeah. us successful, Yeah, that we were, we became really kind of lazy, mm -hmm. you know, and got away from it because it wasn't necessary. Right. And so because of that, we've had to revisit that. Oh my, hold oh. on, please hold. Hold on, folks. Um, because of that, we had to um, revisit, you know, set the agents down, all of us together and say, hey, guys, we've got to get back to the basics. We've started, re you know, staging the homes again. We're um, putting out, taking advantage of the marketing programs that are offered through the office here, um, yeah. you know, just really going full bore to make sure that our listings are standing out amongst all the others. Yeah. So I'm going to say the old is new again. You know, uh, you know, let's go back to 2019, right? 2018, 2019, all mm -hmm. of those same practices that were making agents successful are now coming back and making agents, you know, or, or, or what's going to be needed to set yourself apart from correct the rest of the, the rest of the call it the, the real estate community that, that, that's out there. Yes. So, and then there are also so many of the agents, you know, there's been a whole new proliferate, what we've doubled, almost tripled in the number of agents yeah. um, in the last nine, 10 years mm -hmm. in this market. Um, so there's a lot of agents that are new that came into the market when things were completely different than they are now. We're getting back, like you said, to where we were previously. Right. So we have to get back to the basics. We have to get back and we've got that advantage mm -hmm. that we know how to do this exactly. and we know how to do it right. Yeah. We just have to you know, work a little harder. Yeah. It's almost as if you're setting your resume, you know, your current transaction is making your resume for your next, for, for your future transaction. Yes. And so um, that resume needs to be dialed in and 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 doing the right steps yes so that when you show up for that listing appointment you can say hey listen this is what all this is everything that i did and we got that house sold so interesting you say mark you know agents um here's an interesting national stat uh approximately 50 percent of agents nationally have been in the market for less than three years amazing yeah um here's the next one 90 percent of the agents have been in the market for less than 10 years, right? So you're only talking about 10% of the agents out there that have been in the market that have seen mm -hmm. a couple of different roller coasters in, in, in the market. Right. And I will tell you as, as a young managing director, it's like, I am leaning on you guys and Olin and Jen to, to say, okay, where, where are we going with the market? What, what's happening next? Um, so that we can stay, do a little bit of predictive analysis and, and stay out in front of it. For, for you agents, really, because you guys are in the close fight. You guys are duking it out. So how do we how do we help you uh, in, in the long fight? 
And we're, you know, we're all running a business. Yep. You know, that's the other thing. You have to have a strong business mindset right. um, in order to, you know, take advantage of the great times, you know, when sales are strong. But likewise, and probably more importantly, when things are contracting, when the market is contracting and things become a little more difficult, this is when you really need to be able to sit down and say, okay, you know, where can I, you know, get the most bang for my buck? What expenses can I um, cut back on and where can I pour on, you know, a little more like what do I need to lean into in order to get the business back to, right. you know, because there is going to be a lot of contraction. People instantly, you know, just like the accountants, we instantly cut the budget, cut the budget, cut the budget. But you've got to be very careful, especially when it comes to marketing, not to cut all of that marketing budget and uh, again, lean right. into it. Yeah. Um, uh, you kind of touched on a couple points and that's, and that's the idea of leverage um, and the idea of leveraging the marketing packages, leveraging the, the team that's around you. You've built your own team, but, you know, leveraging the Coldwell Banker Distinctive Properties team. Right. So my question for the, for the, for you agents out there is what can you leverage? We've got so many tools, so many things that, that you can lean into. Um, what can you leverage to help make you successful? in your business as we go through the, this changing market. Well, and Jimmy, we touched on in the leadership meeting today, you know, there are a lot of publications that have free um, uh, space available for, you know, like our newspaper, our local newspaper, right. you know, talking about the office stuff and the agents and that sort of thing. We need to be taking advantage of that collectively as an office, as well as individuals. Yep, absolutely. So, okay, uh, shift gears a little bit. Um, you are super active in the community. Um, and one of the things is the air show. Yes. And so I wanted to, um, so just for everybody, we, we have an air show that's normally every other year, but uh, it's been four years si since yeah. we've had the last air show because of COVID. And we've got the air show coming up in October. October um, 14th and 15th. Yes, absolutely. So tell us a little bit the, about the air show and then something that's near and dear to my heart. And that's uh, kind of what you're doing to, to support and celebrate veterans. So U.S. Navy Blue Angels will yep. be the featured um, jet team. And our air show in Grand Junction is one of the largest in the entire region. Region being like a four or five state area. Mm -hmm. um, we're very fortunate that um, our ratings are very high with the military and that is why we're supported so heavily with their, you know, with the jet teams when yeah. they are available. Thunderbirds or Blue Angels. Um, we've even had the Snowbirds and Canadian Snowbirds in yeah. before. Yeah. So, and I'll, I would just say you'd have an army presence here if we flew jets, but we don't. So, but anyway, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Had to get that in. I had to, I had to, I had to, had to get it in. All right. That army. Not a competitive thing, yeah, okay. Jimmy. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Um, anyway, so yes, um, at the Grand Junction Regional Airport on October 14th and 15th, uh, we will be hosting the the Blues along with many other military and civilian uh, performers. Uh, this is um, we we do things. You asked about the the veterans yeah. packages and stuff. We, as Coldwell Banker Distinctive Properties, started in 2019 a program where we were able to offer and sponsor half price tickets for the veterans that wanted to attend the show. And um, we started this just, I mean, this was well into the ticket season. Right. And we came up with the idea together and uh, we started making the sales. And we had people from all over the country that called us. And wanted to come in and take advantage of the of the half price tickets, tickets yeah. and get out there to the show. Um, it was tremendously successful this year, right from the start. Coldwell Banker Distinctive Properties is once again going to sponsor the veteran tickets. Um, they will be available only through the offices. Um, and we'd like to. I'd like to call on you know our Montrose and you know other Colorado offices, please. Um, to help us get these sold to the veterans um, in your marketplace. And um, those tickets, again, we are anticipating they will be on sale March 1st and will carry through then through October yeah. during the date of the event. And, and we're anticipating a, like a half price ticket. Absolutely. For, for, for yes. Veterans, uh -huh. right? yes. Yeah. So we like, we can't quite talk ticket pricing quite yet, but I think uh -huh. we're looking about we're half looking price. Ticket prices, I will let you know the 
The general admission ticket prices will be thirty dollars, um, and then the veteran ticket prices will be fifteen. 15. And so, it'll be picked yes. up at our office. Correct. It's amazing. Yep. So. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for supporting the veterans. Oh, thank you, yeah. Jimmy, so, for making this yeah. all possible, <laughs> buddy. It's all you. Hey, uh, so team, thank you very much, Julie, for just an amazing conversation. I will tell you, team out there, that if you have any questions, I know Julie will pick up the phone and answer those questions, just like she does with our agents in the office here. So um, wealth of knowledge. And I know you keep me in check. You know, when we talk about surrounding <laughs> surrounding yourself with, with people that are smarter than you, guess what? You know, no, no, no. I'm this, just a brain trust I, I know, of, but, of my family. I'm like the the low end. I'm I'm clear at the very bottom. <laughs> I know, but you you have made me a better leader. So I want to thank you for that. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, but uh yeah, team, appreciate every one of you. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for for talking to us. Sarah, appreciate you. Thanks for the note there. And we will see you guys later. Take care.